Hey everybody, hope you can hear me. Uh, it's stupid loud in here because it's pouring down rain and it's freezing cold, but that's okay. I'm so excited because I finally get moved into the garage, getting all my stuff moved over to the new place. I have my lift in. It's old, it's crusty. It took me a long time to get cleaned up and ready and installed, but I don't care because it's mine and it works and I'm happy. But most importantly, I finally got the Cobra. I am super excited about this. First question I always get, is it real? No, it is not. It's a factory five replica. Um, I don't make anywhere near enough money to buy a real one. And if I did, I'm not sure I'd spend it on a Cobra, but you can help by hitting that like and subscribe button. That'd be awesome. Get closer to that 1K mark would be cool. Anyway, it's got a 351 Windsor stroke to 408. Have some paperwork on it that was built by a local shop so hopefully it doesn't turn out to be a turd it sounds real healthy but this car only has 400 miles on it the previous owner bought the kit in 2010 registered in 2016 and only put 400 miles on it the worst part of the whole thing is right there it's an aod automatic uh, he originally built it with the tko5 speed but didn't had problems with his knee or something like that. So he swapped it to an automatic shortly after building it and then burnt the automatic up somehow. So that's gotta come out ASAP. So yeah, this really was, no kidding, like the cheapest running driving Cobra uh, out there that I found. A uh, complete Cobra that looked like a Cobra and there's really nothing on the market right now. It's kind of crazy. I've looked over the past year, had a bunch of false starts. I was, Let's see, I've looked at Copart. I almost bought a couple of Copart cars. None of those worked out. I lowballed a ton of people uh, trying to get cars down to what I thought was a reasonable value. I mean, I know there's a lot of hours that goes into these things, but the uh, you speak a donor build that was that needed some work, but wasn't the best for um, you know high teens, low twenties, and they're just they're just not out there. Uh, I came really close on a challenge car for twenty five and uh, that fell through unfortunately so i ended up paying 20 for this uh, and it really was the the best deal i could find and i probably could wait longer and found a slightly better car slightly better deal but i i didn't want to wait all winter to get a car i wanted something i could work on and have on the road so it needs a lot of body work these factory fives uh you know when they come out of the mold they got this nice gel coat on them but they have these parting lines um, where the mold sections go together. So all that's gotta be sanded down. Uh, door fitment, I've already started working on. I've got pretty close, but it needs a lot of work still. Panel gaps, like these edges on the hoods, uh, the hood and the trunk, those all need to be trimmed up. Uh, needs weather stripping and all that good stuff. And you see those seams in the front as well. So all that's gotta get ground down, filled. Um, it's kind of a shame. Otherwise, it looked pretty good just in the raw gel coat, but it's a complete kit, so it's not no donor parts. They're all brand new stuff. A lot of good stuff, all upgrades like stainless side pipes. He's got a Moser 8.8 .8 rear in it, disc brakes, uh, limit slip. Got the bumpers rather than the quick jacks, so that was a nice little upgrade. Uh, dual roll bars, which I already started removing them and a few other things, getting ready for body work as soon as this transmission swap is done. Maybe on to body work, try to get this thing on the road by spring. Uh, so I got a lot of work cut out for me in the next two months, but. So this is what I came up with. You know, my, my goal of this, this thing is to be on the road for 25 grand, running, driving, body work done, etc. cetera. Uh, so that gives me about five grand in the budget, uh, but I think it's totally doable. This car is mostly there. It just needs a little bit of body work, which I will be doing in house. Probably at this rate next year. I thought I'd be doing it this winter, but I think uh, I think getting on the road, running and driving as is, is probably a little bit more more feasible solution. Uh, it needs a transmission, so the the transmission's gonna take up a chunk of the budget. Uh, it's a stroked 351, so it's a 408. Uh, no idea what's putting out. Uh, it was built by a local shop, not like Blueprint or something like that. So it could be a complete POS, could be a turd, I don't know. Uh, so I'm not gonna go out and drop three grand, $3,500 on TKO and accessories to put in this thing. I've got T5s laying around. Uh, we're gonna talk about that next video. I'm gonna do the transmission swap and show you how to kind of hack the T5 market, hopefully. 
Uh, so you can get a good transmission that should hold up for what we're doing with it. I mean, it's gonna do track days, but I'm not drag racing the thing. I'm not power shifting the thing. So I'm not worried about fragging it that much. And if it is, the transmission I'm gonna put in is gonna be pretty much expendable. You know, back in the 90s, a friend showed me a magazine ad that had how you could build one of these cars using a, a Fox body for a donor and get one on the road for cheap. And it sounded cool and I researched it. And then in 04, I got an information pack while I was in college and I still have the thing. It, it was post, uh, that's how I know what year it was. It was postmarked. So the, uh, I've done a lot of research on the things and I've come close a bunch of times. It's taken me 15 years to finally actually get to the point where I've bought one for myself. I won't lie, Ford versus Ferrari was a bad influence. You know, I, that was kind of the catalyst that kicked all this off again. You know, I wanted to, I saw it and I didn't have a sports car at the time. I've, you know, sold my Corvette a couple years ago and just been driving beaters and working on my tea bucket. And I got a couple of videos of that up and check out. And so I haven't really had a sports car and I want to get back to doing track days. And yeah, here we are. So I spent a ton of time shopping around, uh, you know, the forums, Facebook groups, that sort of thing. The ad for this car it was a couple months old when I found it, and it uh, it was a good description. It had uh, some photos that were okay, and had some interest. And I just assumed the thing was gone. And I messaged the seller, and it was slow communication. But I heard back; it was, it was still available. I finally got a number from the guy and uh went back and forth i finally called him on uh on a sunday before thanksgiving talked to him for uh, quite a while about the car and thought about it for a day or two and made the decision to get it and so thanksgiving day u-haul was open in the morning so i went and grabbed the sketchiest u-haul trailer i've seen it's got to be like the oldest one in the fleet it's the only one they had i can't believe i actually put this car on it but uh, hauled out to Ohio, 10 hour run out there, spent the night, met the guy the next morning, test drove it. Uh, I thought we were gonna wreck it on the test drive. The, the guy was trying to show off tires were cold and uh, I thought we were going in the guardrail and going to the hospital. It was uh, like one of my worst test drive experiences ever, but whatever, made it back to the house, loaded on the trailer and brought it home that night. And so it was like, 28 hours round trip, a uh, thousand miles, and uh, here we are. So there you have it. Good overview of the Cobra. Already got up on the lift, getting ready to start tearing into it. So hopefully lots of good stuff to come. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe so you can see more of it. And thanks for tuning in. Happy motoring.